In this video, Understanding Diabetes, you will learn how a normal animal controls their blood sugar levels, how a type 1 diabetic, which is considered insulin dependent, how it is different from the normal animal, and how diet change can affect their blood sugar levels, and then what is a type 2 diabetic, or non-insulin dependent, how is it different from a normal animal, and how diet change can affect it. First, we're going to look at a normal animal. In the normal animal, we have the bloodstream, which is the superhighway of the body. It is what transports all the nutrients and waste products around the body to either be used or to be discarded. Around the body, the bloodstream comes in contact with cells. When we first eat a meal, uh, the carbohydrates are broken down into simple sugars so that they can be absorbed into the bloodstream and taken to the, around to the cells that need them. Now glucose molecules are energy for the body. This is how cells get the energy that they need to do their job. So we've just eaten a meal and we have a lot of glucose floating around in the bloodstream. Now what's going to happen is we are going to have the pancreas is going to release molecules of insulin. Insulin is needed to be able to take the sugar that's in the bloodstream and put it into the cells that need it. So this insulin molecule is going to come and attach to the outside of the cell, which will allow the glucose to travel into the cell where it's needed for energy. Now, <clears throat> if this mechanism wasn't here, if we just had blood sugar in there and we didn't need the insulin molecule, what would happen is the cells that are closest to where the sugar gets taken up would take up all the sugar and there wouldn't be any left around the body for the cells that need it. So this is a control mechanism so that we're able to control how much sugar gets taken up into the cells that need the energy and how much is left in the bloodstream to be used by cells further away. So what we have happen in a type 1 diabetic is we have our bloodstream just as in the normal animal. We have our cell that needs the energy sitting out there. We have glucose molecules from eating our meal. So right after we eat, we have high blood sugar values. But this time, the pancreas, for some reason, is not producing insulin. So what this means is that there's no insulin to take the sugar up into the cells that need the energy. So the cells cannot get energy that they need to use. So this, this sugar floats around in the bloodstream. It's too high. It causes organ damage and um, can so cause very serious health problems. So in these animals, um, what we do is we are going to take a needle or a syringe, fill it with insulin. We're going to inject it into the body of the animal. Then the insulin molecules are there to be able to be used by the body and get the sugar into the cells that need them. Now in these animals, the amount of insulin that they need is dependent on how much sugar gets put into their bloodstream after they eat. So in these cases, the insulin levels need to be monitored very closely. When you change the diet, say we lower the amount of carbohydrate, so we lower the amount of sugar that's ingested, and we increase the protein amount, 
So instead of having sugar molecules, we're going to have more amino acids or protein molecules in there in the bloodstream floating around. What this does is this reduces the amount of sugar that's available and this will reduce the amount of insulin that the animal needs to get the sugars where they need to go. If you give too much insulin, the sugar, all the sugar goes into cells and there's nothing left available for this cells that ha have to use sugar for energy, which are your brain cells. So in these animals, if too much insulin is given, the blood sugar falls too low and they, the blood, there's no energy for the brain. In this case, you can, the animals start to become lethargic. They can have seizures and death because they, their brain cells do not have the energy to work. So in these guys, it's a, it's a good idea to reduce the amount of sugar, increase the amount of protein. So protein can also be used for energy, but it's just used in a more complicated and different path, but it can be used. And we limit the amount of free sugar that's available. This will reduce the amount of insulin that needs to be injected by the owner. Now we're going to take a look at the type 2 diabetic, the non-insulin dependent. This is what most cats fall into, is this category. So in this category, we have the bloodstream. We have the cells that need the energy. We have the sugar molecules that are needed, or that are uh, uptaken with their diet. And we also have insulin. But in this case, the cells are non-responsive to insulin. So the pancreas is making it like it should, but for some reason, usually uh, because the, the pet is overweight, or sometimes there's a disease process going on, or something has changed in the animal. Um, for instance, women that are pregnant, this will happen too. Their cells just all of a sudden don't respond, so the insulin comes to connect with the cell and bounces off. In this case, a lot of times what will first happen is that the, they will be put on more insulin. So the more insulin that they have, they will take up a little bit, but they'll be non-controlled, which means their blood sugar fluctuates and you can't get it regulated. Even though they're on a good diet, you're giving the regular injections, they just don't, they're just not controlled by it. In these animals, what we can do is we give them a alternate source for energy. <clears throat> so this works particularly well in our cats because we know cats are obligate carnivores. They weren't made to have a lot of free sugar. Their body prefers to use amino acids for energy. Again, this is quite a complicated process, so we're not going to go through the whole process of how this is done, but just know that in these animals, especially cats, we can give them more amino acids, more protein in their diet. This will reduce the level of blood sugar that they have, but their cells will still get the energy that they need because they will use the amino acids to produce energy and be healthy. In many of these patients, we can uh, eliminate the need for any insulin at all, and in others, we can at least reduce the amount of insulin that's needed by putting them on a species-appropriate diet, which is high in protein and fat and low in carbohydrates. We have now reviewed diabetic animals. We've learned how a normal animal controls their blood sugar levels. We've reviewed type 1 diabetes, or insulin-dependent animals, how it is different than a normal animal, and how diet change can affect it. 
We've also looked at type 2 diabetes, or non-insulin dependent, how it is different than the normal animal, and how a diet change can affect it. Congratulations, you have finished your video training on diabetes. Please take time to answer your test questions while the information is fresh in your mind. You are welcome to come back and review this video anytime you need and as often as you need.